What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Chris, man. We are here at the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast, Conversations with CD. I got a special guest that's coming on today. Her name is Kate Rooney. She is now affiliated with Cron TV out there in the Bay Area, uh, but she has been a producer. She's been a sideline reporter. She's been a sports anchor. She's been multiple roles in this industry. Uh, and she brings a lot of knowledge, a lot of professionalism, and, I'm, and it's going to be interesting talking to her today, getting to know her why into sports journalism, her why of choosing University of Southern Cal, which uh, that's my favorite football team outside of the Bulldogs. Of course, that's my favorite team because I grew up in Southern California. So uh, it's going to be interesting to get to talk to her and get to know her a little bit. So without any further ado, I bring to you the wonderful, the talented Kate Rooney. Hey, how we doing? Chris, I'm great. How are you? Doing good, doing good. You look absolutely lovely. I just want to start off by saying that, by the way. Thank you. Got to try to look good for you. Hey, well, listen, <laughs> I, you are. There's no trying to do You are doing your thing. And I want to say thank you for hopping on my podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder. I really do appreciate that. And before we get started, I want to ask you how you and your family doing during these pandemic times. It's been weird having a couple little kids in pandemic, but I think we're making it work and, you know, just trying to adapt and make their lives as normal as possible. So I understand. I definitely yeah. understand. Um, <laughs> I was um, I was out there in California in Los Angeles, actually in October, and it was so weird because it was like everything was just now like opening back up at that time because uh, it was so closed down. I mean, California yeah. was one of like the last few states to really open up. And I, I guess know. they were just doing it right, but it was a lot of things that were shut down at that time. I was out there for a sports career fair, and mind you, the very next month, I get hired as a sports reporter out here in Minnesota. So, I'm actually, <laughs> yeah, right? So, wow, I'm actually out here in Minnesota uh, as a sports reporter now. So Fantastic. Yeah. That's you. wonderful. Did that come out of that fair? Um, I, I don't know if it did or not. Um, I would say... I would say no, because I also applied to Teamwork Online, also applied to like Pantheon. I applied to like at least 300, 400 places because I graduated last July, um, July 2021, and I was applying everywhere before I was even graduating. And I applied to hundreds of jobs and I got five offers. I did. I got five. That's amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was just kind of just, you know, writing and sports writing and reporting and, you know, and out here, uh, I work at a publication out here in Minnesota as a reporter and taking photography and covering all types of prep sports and a college that we have out here. Now, it's not Minneapolis. I'm about two hours away from Minneapolis, but it's, uh, have you ever heard of a town called Marshall, Minnesota? I don't know if I have, but that's a good name. <laughs> yeah, Marshall, right? I like it. It's, it's about two hours southwest of Minneapolis. And that's where I'm at right now. So, yeah, it's a lot of sports that's happening out here, which is great. So I love the work. And then we have a, uh, we have one university that we have here in the entire oh, town. Cool. It's 11,000 population. So, yeah, it's a small town. For sure. Pretty small, but that's a great place to start. I bet they're passionate about their prep sports, like you said. Oh, they are. They are so passionate about it. Um, and I love it. I love it out here. Everything except the cold, because I grew up in California. So uh, Where are you from? San Diego. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that must be a huge change for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, grew, I grew up there, and I came from Atlanta, Georgia, where my, my mother is now. Um, and, yeah, both of those places, Atlanta and San Diego, are not very, I mean, they don't get cold. They get chilly. Let's say that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they don't get cold. You know what I mean? So, um, but, yeah, I wanted to also say the reason why I, had, I wanted to talk to you is because, I watched some of your videos on YouTube. Now, mind you, when I oh, looked God, you up on when that's I looked old. Up, yeah, <laughs> when, I, when I looked you up on YouTube, it had a lot of nine and ten years ago type of stuff, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and then it threw me back because one of the videos had an AOL video, and I was like, "Damn, that is wait, old. really? Oh my God. <laughs> I don't even know what that is." It was like it was, you had an AOL speech. 
or something like that. It was like an AOL speech that you were doing. You know what? I think I was maybe um, like trying to win a contest for AOL was having a contest for like sports reporters or something. Okay. okay. That must be what it was. I was like, oh, okay. I but... never worked for AOL. <laughs> Got yeah. you. Totally. But you look so professional, uh, so passionate, obviously, and just driven, really driven to what you really want to do uh, out there reporting. Obviously, one of the uh, one of the recent ones that I looked at because I looked at uh, a few videos was the one you did at Richard Sherman. I was like, "Damn, how is she not out of breath with all that that she just said?" Because there was a lot that you really like said in that. You were very informative, and I'm like, "You didn't take no sips of water. You didn't take no breath." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Geez," but you said a lot, and um, and that was great. That was awesome. So I was, it was a no-brainer for me, Kate, to hit you up and talk to you, get to know your story, and get to know your Thank you. No doubt, no doubt. So I'm really glad to connect. Absolutely. So without any further ado, I'm gonna just get into it. Do it. I want you to talk to me about some of your inspirations and maybe aspirations that you might have had growing up and what gravitated you towards a career in sports journalism. Well, it's actually funny you mentioned that because not too long ago, I was going through some boxes at my parents' house and I found an old journal that I had written and this aspiration dated back even further than I realized, because this is probably like my freshman year of high school. I got involved in my school paper in middle school, yeah. started doing, you know, I mean, a middle school newspaper is not that serious. You're just writing about TV shows and whatever, you know, current events, whatever else. Um, but I found an old journal from a little after that time. And it said, quote, I want to be a sideline girl like Lisa Guerrero. And I'd kind of wow. forgotten about Lisa Guerrero because now she's like a true crime reporter. I think she's right. on like extra or something like that. Right. Um, but she was someone obviously that I really looked up to as a little girl. I am an only child. So my dad would always have me watch the Giants and the 49ers with him. I grew up in San Francisco. Mm. And um, I just remember idolizing Michelle Tafoya, thinking she was so incredible. I still think she's flawless. Yeah. Um, I was really into the sideline thing. That sounded like a really uh, cool job. You just get to be down there on the field. You get to be in the game. I didn't fully understand what it was, but I, I knew that it sounded like something I wanted to do. Um, I did get derailed a little bit. I actually didn't end up majoring in journalism in college. I also did theater and performed, and I auditioned for a couple theater schools and got in to a really good one that I didn't think I would have been able to get into. Yep. And so I just felt like I couldn't pass up that opportunity. Um, but while I was there, I never gave up my love for sports. I just watched a ton of sports. I read a ton of articles. I watched a ton of Sports Center and the local uh, sports people in Boston, which is where I was. And um, eventually, you know, I, I came back to journalism. I just realized that I really missed writing. I missed um, talking about sports in that way. Yeah. And I decided to try to pursue that career. So kind of a circuitous path to get there. But, um, you know, and I think if something is meant to be, it will come back into your life when you least expect it. Absolutely. I like that word, circuitous. Okay, <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's what's up. And yes, you mentioned it uh, because I, I did that, uh, some research, and you did do musical theater in Boston from 2000 to 2004. And my question to you is, because I acted in a couple of musicals myself, and I like music. Really? Yes, I did two musicals in high school. So the musical I did was High School Musical. That was one. And, then, <laughs> and two was my favorite one to do was Les Miserables. So, wow, that's a big one for high schoolers. Absolutely. So yeah, uh, those two are two of my favorites. Um, but I also have seen Rent. I've also seen Hairspray, uh, Annie, uh, Mama Mia. I mean, the story, it goes on and on. Family wow, okay. Rapper, all of that. So <laughs> I want to know, what are your top three musicals that you like? Ooh, that's a really good question. I didn't expect anyone to ask me that in a sports interview. But you already <laughs> mentioned one of them. Rent is one of my yeah. all-time favorites because I was like an angsty teenager right when that came out. And I was super into the drama of it. It came and um, played in San Francisco for, gosh, I want to say like a year when I was in high school. And we, my friends and I would go try to get tickets all the time. Um, I love Hamilton. Hamilton has made its way into my top three. I think it's mm. one of the coolest, most innovative musicals out there right now. And I was able to go see it a couple of years ago. So that was a really special treat. I still listen to that soundtrack embarrassingly often, almost every day. That's okay. Um, 
That's all so right. much so that my husband, who doesn't know anything about musical theater, loves it too. <laughs> um, and then one of my other favorites is um, a classic. I'm going to mention this because the composer of it just died. His name is Stephen Sondheim, and he is a genius, a legend in musical theater. And it's called Into the Woods. It's a musical about, um, yeah. it takes a bunch of different fairy tales, Little Red Riding Hood, Jack and the Beanstalk, Cinderella, and combines them and weaves all the stories together. So a lot of high schools do it. And um, it's just a beautiful story and beautiful music. So those are probably my top three off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, definitely want to see Hamilton. Have not seen it live Gotta yet. I it. was looking out here in Minnesota. They're not coming to Minnesota right now. So I was like, oh, oh damn man. it. I was like, oh, okay. I'll come back eventually to Minneapolis, yeah. probably. Yeah. Maybe not Marshall, but Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think the Minneapolis there. And I'm willing to travel to see that because I really want to see it. Uh, honorable mention before I move on is Wicked. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Wicked before, but. Oh, Wicked of is, course. Uh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. saw Wicked when it first came out, and I still listen to that one too and yeah. love that one. Yeah. Absolutely. You're, I'm impressed with your knowledge of musicals. I was oh, yeah. not expecting that. Yeah, I'm 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 a guy that you know people say I'm different, but no, I just love I just love all kinds of stuff. If it wasn't yeah. sports, it would probably be music because I love to sing, I love karaoke, and I just love talented people that could do that. So watching. Well, if you ever come to San Francisco, you're gonna have to hit me up because there's some great karaoke spots out here, and I think that would be really fun. Oh, there's no question. I definitely <laughs> will be back out there in the uh, Bay Area. There's no question about that. Nice. That's for sure, and I will hit we'll do you it. up. <laughs> that's, what's, that's awesome. Okay. I want to ask you about University of Southern California. You're a Trojan alum. Which, I'm a Trojan. Fight on. Right? Right? Which, by the way, is my, one of my favorite schools. Uh, coming from Georgia, Georgia Bulldogs. Yes, I love that school too. Lived out there in Atlanta for a while. But yes, I grew up in San Diego. Now, obviously, we have the Aztecs down there in San Diego. Yeah. The Trojans, though. I grew up where I was in the Reggie Bush, Matt oh, Liner yeah. era. That's where I grew up. That's where I saw, you know, where Reggie Bush was doing video game stuff on the football field. That's where I love. And I've been to the Coliseum. So I want to ask you, though, were there any other schools that could have persuaded you from going to the University of Southern California? Yeah, um, there were so many great journalism programs out there that I, and I didn't really know much about the industry, so I decided to just narrow it down by applying to schools that you could actually major in broadcast journalism, and there were only, I think, five or six schools where you could do that, um, and so I applied to all of those. I think I got into three of them, okay. three of the five, and um, the other one that I really strongly considered was University of Miami, mm. um, because I wanted to go somewhere that had really strong sports so I could cover those teams and parlay that into you know my future career being able to say hey I've already covered a team that professional reporters cover right look at my work and and you know I, I can do this um so I really strongly considered Miami but after talking to some people in the industry it just seemed like USC's journalism school had a a really good reputation I was from California living on the east coast at the time and I thought it might be nice to try going back there and like you I got really into college football during the Reggie Bush era it was something I didn't really grow up with because um it's just not apologies to Cal and Stanford and San Jose State but it's just not as big in the Bay Area as our pro teams are yeah, um yeah so I didn't get into it until a little bit later my best friend went to University of Texas and that was the Vince Young era I went to go visit her went to games would watch games with her and um, it was just so exciting. I fell in love with the sport. Also, you know, fell in love with that USC team that you're talking about. And so being able to then go there and cover the Trojans was incredible. Um, and I'm, I'm glad I made that choice. Sometimes I think, wow, how different would my life would have been if I chose one of those other journalism programs? Exactly. But the, uh, USC put me on a good path, so. Yes, and it produced the greatest college football game ever with the USC Texas. I don't care what anybody no doubt. says. Best that ever. game was the greatest. <laughs> uh, I was young in my very young. Uh, um, I definitely, I believe. Don't even tell me how young, because I was a <laughs> <full> of adult already. <laughs> I was definitely, I was definitely young, but it was a great game. Great game, <laughs> no doubt. I want to remember it. That works for me. Oh yes, yes, I definitely <laughs> do, no doubt. Um, I want to ask you some favorite things. So okay. off the rip, give me your four one one. 
based upon these questions I asked you, Kate, okay? All right. Here we go. Favorite music genre? Ah, that's really hard. You're putting me on the spot. Um, let's see. I'm probably going to have to just go with all-encompassing um, pop and hip-hop. That's what I always go back to. Okay. And, um, you know, I listen to a lot of the uh, older stuff that I grew up with, but I've also been trying to get back onto what's new on the you know, pop and hip hop scene as well. I don't know how good of a job I'm doing, but I'm working on listening to some more new music. Okay, I can feel that. I can feel that. Now, Kate, I want to know when you're driving down the street of San Francisco and you're heading to Cron TV, where you are now affiliated with now, uh, I want to know uh, on your Spotify, on your Pandora, or maybe even your radio, what's that one song that comes on that you turn up full blast, you know all the words to, and you singing it at the top of your lungs, the people looking over you at the car like, what the hell is going on? Well, first of all, there are way too many songs to count. Um, <laughs> I, I will turn my radio up loud and I love to sing along with the windows down. That's one of my favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take it back and probably make myself sound pretty lame with this answer. But one song that always gets me pumped is Semi Charm Life by Third Eye Blind. Wow. Reminds me of high school and I'll pump that up and sing full blast to those those songs yeah. and people are probably rolling their eyes if they hear me but uh, oh well charm, like, no shame oh man i, I actually <laughs> like the beat da, 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 da. i yeah. like that song I exactly like that. it's catchy I, right <laughs> yeah i like it i like it i do okay cool for other favorite question favorite movie genre favorite movie genre genre i'm a comedy fan okay is there a comedy that comes to mind, uh, either or maybe a couple that comes to mind that's like classic comedy for you? Yeah, um, one that always makes me laugh to this day is um, Princess Bride. Wow. Um, another classic. I love all the Judd Apatow movies, Forty Year Old Virgin, Knocked yeah. Up, that that yeah. uh, family of movies. Um, so those are some of the ones that I'll just watch over and over and over. Yeah. The, definitely the forty year old version where it where the two black guys are talking in the in the uh in the store <laughs> on the t v yeah. Kevin Hart and that and that scene that cracks me up all the time. I love that. so good okay. <laughs> awesome all right, I like that three more favorites favorite meal you like to cook mm. um favorite meal I like to cook, so I'm not the best cook, but I've definitely um gotten my repertoire down uh, a little bit better over the last few years so okay. I would say um I actually made it last night I made some gnocchi with garlic breadsticks and a delicious fresh salad on the side now that's what I'm talking about Kate now see when I come out there I'm gonna have <laughs> to have some of that you know I'm gonna have to have some of that yeah. oh, it's cool. filling simple easy to prepare and delicious right and listen I'll I'll bring I don't know if the water wine I don't know what you do but I'll bring the refreshment a little bit of both no, that's good okay then we good then that's a perfect <laughs> tandem that's awesome I like that I really like that okay favorite place you ever traveled to Ooh, um that one's actually kind of easy for me I've been fortunate to travel a good amount and the place that I'm dying to go back to is Thailand um I went there about oh gosh I think it was 10 years ago at this point pretty sad but uh, none of us have gotten to do much international travel the last couple of years. Um, it's a beautiful place, beautiful culture, beautiful people, um, affordable, surprisingly. You can stay at a beautiful five-star hotel for like $75 a night, or you could back then. Um, the city of Bangkok is just so vibrant, so much good food, music, great nightlife, um, and the islands are just magical. Um, the Thai sunsets and beaches, nothing compares to it. So I'm, I'm hoping I can get back there at some point in my life. And that is uh, my most memorable trip to date. Wow, you have just convinced me to put that on the bucket list. You I gotta do it. I never would have thought of uh, Thailand. I never really would have, but- Look wow. it up, you'll be, you'll be into it. There's so many wonderful things to do there. And like I said, pretty affordable to even fly within the country is affordable. So I like highly that. recommend it. I appreciate that, Kate, I do. Last of the favorites, this is favorite alcoholic drink. Um, well, you know, I like you already mentioned wine and I love Sauvignon Blanc. Um, but if I'm going out to a nice cocktail bar and um I'm I'm always gonna order a dirty martini, slightly dirty, just a little bit dirty. <laughs> I, got you. I got you. I'm a cab guy, although I do like a uh, cab cabaret, I like I like the red wine. Um, and but I also definitely like um a good tequila. 
Ooh, nice good choice. Tequila. A good tequila. Yeah, you know, um, if you can give me a good tequila on the rocks, I'm good. I'm with it. I like tequila too. A nice Añejo tequila on the rocks hits the Absolutely. spot sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. It definitely does. Okay, I like that. I want to ask you with being in the professional field, and this question is about mental health. And the reason why I want to uh, ask you this question is it's more prevalent now, uh, more so than ever. You know, athletes are talking about it. Uh, journalists are talking about it. And the reason they're talking about it is because sometimes in this industry, as journalists, you know, you experience all kinds of things. You experience burnout. You experience mental health breakdowns, sometimes physical breakdowns based upon the job. And, you know, you have kids. You have a husband. You have friends. You have family. But we also know that working as a journalist, a sports journalist, we do not have business hours, kind of hours, not eight to four, <laughs> not nine to five. These are hours that could be very long uh, and hours that, and days that can go all week and maybe six, seven. You never know on certain weeks. So my question to you is, how do you balance your mental health and your work? How do you balance your mental health and still keep it and then also balance that work-life balance? Because although you have all those responsibilities, and things that's happening in your life, you still need some cake time too. <laughs> Definitely. I'm glad you asked about that because it is such an important topic and something I've been thinking about a lot lately, especially as relates to athletes. I think for so long decades, athletes have had to put up a facade that they're always strong, right. that uh, nothing can get to them. They're, they're impenetrable, essentially. Um, certainly not true and, and not true either for journalists. I mean, it is, what we do is wonderful. I would not trade it. I pinch myself all the time. Even talking to you is incredible. You know, I get to meet someone I, from across the country that I otherwise wouldn't have connected with. Before right. I talked to you today, I got to interview a couple um, former household names from the NFL, Terrell Davis and Heinz Ward. So I yeah. just have to pinch myself that this is my job. I'm very lucky to do every aspect of it. But mm -hmm. that being said, it is a grind. There are definitely times where um, I don't want to go into work on a Sunday. I just want yeah. to hang out and watch the games or be with yeah. my family on a Sunday. Yeah. Um, I've worked, you know, every holiday. I've worked Christmas, Christmas Eve, Thanksgiving, New Year's Day, um, Memorial Day. I, you know, I've worked every single holiday. You name it, I've worked it. So that, you know, that's a challenge. Like you said, the unpredictability. Sometimes we don't know what hours we're going to be working the next day. And that can be really challenging with kids. I think that's, that's the hardest part for me. So I do have a, a big mental load. And um, I, the way it manifests for me is I'll go, 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 go. Everything's, you know, going full speed. Mm -hmm. Got everything organized and I'm not really thinking about it. And then it just starts to feel overwhelming and I need to take a break. So luckily okay. I've gotten better at recognizing that myself a little bit. Um, I'm incredibly fortunate to have a supportive partner and um, family around me who can, you know, help out with my children and who can say, hey, you want to go take some time to yourself, go do it. So, um, and my husband works in sports as well. So I try to do the same for him too. Having that balance, that partnership is, is really um, important, I think. But I think where, you know, where it starts is just being able to step back and recognize it and say, hey, the amount of stuff that I'm taking on is not normal and it is a lot to deal with. And I, I don't right. have to shoulder it by myself. Even just acknowledging that can be right. so helpful. But I like to get like a massage and a facial too and have a cocktail when I can, so. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Different kinds um, of therapy. You got to, you got to have that. Um, you know, it's a question that's just very important. Uh, I love listening to the different answers of the different people I've had on this platform of how they cope with mental health, how they deal with stress relievers. You know, some people uh, said they have to take a break from the industry. Some people said that, you know, they use a strong foundation as their family and friends to call on. Uh, some people have been afraid, uh, have been afraid to ask some of their hierarchies and some of their bosses for time, for days, because, you know, sometimes those hierarchy positions only care about the bottom line, right? And they yeah. don't care about your personal mental health and how you're going. It's about, hey, what can you do for me, right? So I, I hear those answers and I really implement it into myself because I want to be able to, you know, I want to be uh, a person that you can rely on. Because, you know, when you first start off in this industry, because I'm coming over from working from the lottery full time and breaking into the industry that I truly love. And when you break into an industry that you love, you're a yes person. Pretty much. You want to be a yes person. You want to say yes, yes, yes all the time because you want to show that they made the right decision. You're in prove it mode. 
but you also don't want to be a doormat. So you have to have that kind of balance to where, you know, oh yeah, you don't want them saying, well, oh, yeah, Chris will do it. Yeah, don't worry about it, Chris will do it. And it comes to a point where you have to be like, you know what, you might have to say no in order to keep your mental straight. So I love- Being able to know. say no when you can is a really powerful thing. And yeah, you were trained in this industry to not feel comfortable saying that a lot, um, like you said. So it is about finding a balance of knowing what is going to make you an asset in this industry, but then also what's going to make you take care of yourself because you're not going to be able to do anything well if you're not um, looking out for yourself first. Facts. Absolutely. I love your answer. I really do. And it, it, it has to be tough. I know it is obviously with children. You want to be the best mom, the best wife, the best sister, daughter, all of that. And no doubt when you work in sports, sometimes it can be like that. But I do, I do like your approach of go, 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 go. And then just be like, let's reach. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's the best approach, but um, you know, it's working for now. <laughs> right. It works for you. So that, and you know, everybody's different. So I love that. I do. Okay. Kate, I want to do this or that. That's what I want to do with you. right I now. love it. I want to throw two things at you and you just tell me one or the other. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Thanksgiving or Christmas. Christmas all the way. I love Christmas music, love the decorations, love Christmas cookies, love the holiday spirit. Give me Christmas every time. Absolutely. I'm the same way. Uh, I have my Ray Charles Christmas album. I like the spirit. Ooh, love it. I like the Rudolph. I'm, okay, I, I could bore you to death with that. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're on the same page. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. Okay. Popeyes or KFC? Um, Popeyes. I love Popeyes uh, chicken sandwich. Mm. I'm... I have Louisiana roots. My family lives in Louisiana. Oh, okay. It's not as legit as like real fried chicken that you'll get in a small hole in the wall place in Louisiana, but it's closer right. than KFC in my opinion. You're right about that. <laughs> they, they, do chicken, <laughs> they do chicken a little different in the bayou down there. They do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, Drive-ins or movie theaters? Oh man, see that question actually makes me sad because I haven't been to a movie theater in a long time. I'm gonna go with movie theater. I love the experience of sitting in a big packed movie theater, everybody laughing or crying or gasping at the same time. I think it's the best way to watch a movie and I hope we'll do that again sometime. I don't know, COVID might've yeah. changed that. Yeah, I hope so too, I hope so too, no doubt. Okay, basketball or football? You know, it's not, now it's like you're making me choose between two children, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go with football. That's the first sport that I fell in love with, and I really love covering football. Um, you know, the 49er season just ended, and I already miss it, and I can't wait for draft night. So I bet football. you can. I love it. I love it. <laughs> My uncle's a huge 49ers fan. He loves Oh, really? Yes, he loves the Fun 49ers. To root for. I was like, oh, gosh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Chargers fan, so we're both, we're Cali. Oh, Rock. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> He did, the same thing. he did the same thing. Gosh. Okay. Baseball or softball? Again, love both sports. I think softball's really having a moment. Um, I love that the message of women empowerment, but I'm gonna have to pick baseball. Uh, I just think it's such a beautiful sport. I find it riveting. I don't I know some people say it's boring, but to me, how can you find a sport where every single pitch matters and has the potential to change the game boring? Love baseball. Hope we get to have a baseball season. Uh, that starts on time. Yeah, I mean it's the only sport that it has. It's a sport that has the most games. Uh, the yeah. most games that you can attend. Uh, Eighty-one at home. Uh, even if you're in the San Francisco area and they play to the Oakland, then you can also attend those. So it's like exactly man. you get double <laughs> in the Bay Area. <laughs> so it's like, man, how can you not love baseball? Obviously, a very emotional set time for San Francisco because Buster Posey, Buster Posey yeah. retired this year, uh, and he's he's been a staple in that San Francisco uh, community and on that team of the World Series championships that they've had. So, yeah, be interesting to see how them Giants do because they were very good last year. I know as a Padres fan, we got beat up on pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. It'd be great to see. Okay, I got four more for you. Okay. Ta Thailand or California? I, I think I'm going to have to go with California. California girl, born and raised, and um, I I love it here. And I think the state has so much to offer. You can go up to Tahoe and, and or Mammoth and go see the snow. You got the beach. You got the cities. Um, it's got a little bit of everything. California, 
all, all my life. California love. <laughs> it is a lot of California love on this podcast episode yeah. today. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, wacky sports, Kate. Badminton or bowling? Ooh, um, I used to love badminton back in the day, but I got to go bowling. Okay. That's that's so much fun. And I did a cool story on a, a bowler last year who was blind and deaf and he still managed to bowl. So it's just a sport that is surprises you. It's accessible to people. Um, he found a way to do it. And, you know, it's just a fun thing to, to do with friends too. So yeah, I'm going to go with bowling. I'm going to have to read that story because that sounds intriguing. I love reading people's stories. So I'm definitely going to have to read up on that. And are you yeah. a good bowler? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Gutter balls, gutter balls every time, but I still okay. enjoy it. Uh, that's all right. That's okay. You'd be perfect. I love the bowl against people <laughs> for sure. Um, this is chicken wing flavor, Kate. Ooh, barbecue, okay. barbecue or lemon pepper? Wow, that's a hard choice. Um, let's go with barbecue. Barbecue is a classic. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan. Put barbecue okay. sauce on lots of different things. Barbecue wings. Cool. Dry or wet? Wet. Give me the juicy wings. I like that. Okay. Bone in or boneless? Mm, can get down with both, but I think I'm going to have to go with boneless overall. I love boneless wings. That's my girl. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but boneless with the sauce. I love it. Yeah. Sauce, is, love sauce it. is crucial. Okay. Now, as a California product, this is the last one that I will ask you. Okay. Who in your mind was the better player? Okay. Um, that had effects on California. I would say Reggie okay. Bush or Buster Posey. Wow. Um, I think they really had a different effect on um, California. Mm -hmm. That's a really tough choice because I'm a big Reggie Bush fan. I think he deserves his Heisman back. Um, yep. I'll support Reggie all the way. But I think I'm ultimately going to have to go with Buster Posey because his impact on that San Francisco Giants franchise that won three world championships can't be overstated. He's someone who really made positive contributions to the community while he was here, did a lot of work. Um, he lives in the town one over from me. People just love him here. They're, everyone's really sad that he's planning to move back to the South. And um, he is just someone that I think really changed the face of the franchise, a homegrown giant that fans are absolutely going to miss like crazy. So I think Buster probably had a bigger overall impact, but much love for Reggie. Never going to, never want to discount um, what he did for his own sport and uh, how beloved he is in in Southern California. Absolutely, yeah. We can go Buster fifty one, Reggie forty nine. We can do. That. I like it. We can do that. Okay, I like that. <laughs> That's about where I stand. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, Kate, talk to me about some challenges. Now we touched up on mental health, work life balance, and, and all that, but I want to know what other kind of challenges have you faced. Uh, being in this industry, whether it's from maybe a schedule of going in and having those long hours, or maybe it was location, being somewhere, working somewhere where, you know, it's a tough location to work at, or gender. Maybe it's not around a lot of women like yourself, or maybe looked at differently because you're a woman, and which is unfortunate in this industry, but it does happen. So what kind of challenges have you faced? Well, I have a, I'll, I'll give you two different examples. Um, first, I'll say really quickly that I've been incredibly lucky to work for a lot of companies that really value employing women okay. in sports. Um, I worked at Pac-12 Network, which at the time had a female president and a lot of women in roles that you don't typically see women in in sports behind the scenes a lot. Right. Um, right. A woman was one of the faces of the network as well, Ashley Adamson. And I've been able to find a really incredible network of supportive women um, who are never competitive and just the biggest source of support and lifting each other up. So I think that's incredible. And I think that that's really trending in the right direction. But um, challenge wise, um, one thing that I really struggled with and continue to struggle with is imposter syndrome. Um, from the first day I ever went to a USC practice as a student, I felt like I didn't belong. I felt like I had no business being there. I was nervous to ask questions, nervous to um, interview a player with someone watching me. And to this day, if I am lying in bed at night and I think of a way that I phrased a question that I didn't like or I felt like it was wrong, um, it makes me cringe. I still have a few moments like that over the course of my career from that first season covering USC to even 
this past year covering the Warriors, for example, where I think of something I said in a press conference or the way I phrase something in a story that makes me feel like, ah, I'm so embarrassed. You know, how, how did I say it like that? How did I get hired after I made that gaffe? Right. Um, but really, people ask stupid questions all the time. No one ever remembers them or thinks twice about them after that mm. moment. Mm. And my questions probably weren't as stupid as I thought. Um, it's really just in your own mind. I, for me, that's been one of the biggest things I've had to overcome in my career is believing that I belong, believing that there's a space for me. Yeah. Um, and at times I feel incredibly confident and like I absolutely 100% um, do fit in and, and contribute something meaningful to the, the space that is sports journalism. Um, right. It fluctuates. I mean, I, I still definitely deal with it all the time, you know, especially when I'm surrounded by people who have been doing it for 30, 40 years, you kind of feel like the little sister sometimes, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So that's an ongoing battle for me. And I know it's something a lot of other people deal with as well. So just wanted to mention that. The other thing that I think um, a lot of people don't realize is how physically demanding this career can be, well, depending on what aspect of the industry you're in. First of all, just the sleepless nights. We have to work such long hours, be up at odd hours, um, stay up late covering games. Yeah. You know, um, it, it can be, and then wake up early for a press conference the next day, maybe. It can be really exhausting. Um, I'll give the example of when I went to the Super Bowl um, in Miami two years ago. Yes. Uh, you know, experience of a lifetime, a dream fulfilled, but it was also one of the hardest weeks of my life because at my station, Cron, um, we still don't have a full cadre of phot photographers. We are mostly MMJs, multimedia journalists, meaning yep. that the reporters, um, for those who might be listening and aren't familiar with that, meaning that we do our own camera work, our own sound checks, um, our own lighting. We're responsible for every aspect of our interviews. And so I was lugging my, my tripod, my camera, my computer, and then my purse loaded up with, you know, my makeup, my brush, my wallet, right. my earphones, all that around Miami, a city I wasn't familiar with for a week. And it was really physically exhausting. And there were times that I felt just frustrated and, um, you know, kind of bitter that I had to do this when there were other reporters there who did have photographers with them and had that help. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily glamorous, but then you're still getting to go there and you're getting to watch a wonderful game in person. You're getting to talk to the athletes and the coaches, which is my absolute favorite part of the job. Yeah. And, um, you know, the physical toll that it took on my body was real. I was physically exhausted afterwards. I had to take some time off work and my, you know, my muscles were like in pain from dragging all that gear around. Um, but it was worth it. And it was an incredible experience. That said, I do think it's just important that people know that it's not necessarily always you know, glamorous. And even if you're at a certain position, um, you know, I'm, I'm in a top 10 market. San Francisco is number six in the country. So you might think that you're, you know, getting a wardrobe paid for and a hair and makeup person and someone is setting up all your shots, but you know, right. that's not the case. And a lot of my colleagues at other stations here in the Bay Area do the same thing. So I just think it's important to know that um, for people who might not really understand how the industry works, that there is still a huge grind uh, that never never stops, no matter how far you ascend uh, in the industry. I love that you said that. And I want to touch up on a few of those points. I really do. And the reason why I ask that question is answers like those. And you gave great answers all through uh, this conversation that we've had. Grace. <laughs> that answer that you just gave is true. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to start uh, a platform like this and connecting with other journalists not just in sports, but in different genres as well, and not just journalists, but in different uh, communicative positions as well, is because to learn what you do, to learn who you are and what you have to go through. So people, when they watch this or when people do, if they view it or not, they understand the life of a journalist. Like when you say yeah, yeah. MMJ, that's one man band. That's mm -hmm. carrying around all the stuff, that's setting up all the stuff, that's editing, shooting, that's all that. Right. And that's tough to do, especially when you are a person just by yourself lugging all that stuff around. Like you said, it's physically demanding when you have deadlines that you have to get stuff in by. Uh, it's tough. You know, a lot of people don't understand the behind the scenes work you do. You know, they see the, the beautiful Kate Rooney in front of the camera <laughs> reporting, talking, you know, all about sports. She's passionate about it, but they don't see what you have to do behind the scenes. And that's what I really respect. 
and understand as a journalist on this side as well as having to lug stuff around. I did that in college many times. <laughs> and, I, I'm, and now, you know, I take pictures and I work for a publication, so I don't lug around stuff, but I do have to write on deadlines. And I do yeah, have yeah. to be late at games. I do have to interview people just like you do. And they don't understand that because they just see what you, they see what they see on TV. you in front of the TV mm-hmm. talking. But it takes a lot to get there. And I really respect that. The goal is to make it look easy and look look beautiful and simple and refined. It but is. the behind the scenes process is not beautiful and simple it's and refined. Not. <laughs> it's not. And I really do respect that of all journalists, including yourself. Uh, and that's why I am inspired Thank by you. you. I admire that because like you said, you know, this is a tough, tough job. And there are some people who do leave this industry mm-hmm. because of that. So the ones that stick around, uh, just kudos and, and, and much respect too. And that's why I gotta I gotta give you your roses, no doubt, <laughs> no doubt. Because thank you, and same to you. I know you're you're doing the same grind as well. So absolutely, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I got two top four questions. Okay. And the first top four question I want to ask you is about your city that you're in, San Francisco. Now, mind you, uh, I am from California. And I've been to every city in California except San Francisco. You're kidding. I am not, unfortunately. <laughs> I hate that too, because I love the Bay Area, but I have not been there. So I would like to ask you, what is the top four I should do when I touch down, 10 toes, down in San Francisco? What should I do? Okay. The first thing you should do is um, head out to Land's End. That's a beautiful spot right on the water where you can go on a hike. It's about a three mile hike. It okay. takes you down to a couple famous spots in San Francisco. You walk alongside a beautiful golf course, Presidio Golf Course. Yeah. You have a view of the Golden Gate Bridge the entire time. Okay. And then you can go after you finish your hike, you can go have a drink and lunch at a famous restaurant called the Cliff House um, okay. that looks out over the water. Yeah, so that's my favorite probably it's a recommendation that tourists do, but locals do it as well. So I love that. Okay. Second thing, and I think this is going to be controversial for you because you're from San Diego. You got to have a San Francisco style burrito. Um, okay. It's a different. It's a different style of food. I've battled with many San Diegans about which one's better. Ultimately, mm-hmm. I think everyone likes what they grew up with better. But the San Francisco style burritos are pretty famous. They're fantastic. My favorite spot in the city is um, La Taqueria Cancun. It's in the Mission. And they put their burritos on the grill after they fold them up. So it's a little toasty on the outside. Mm -hmm. Really good. So I recommend that. Um, Another thing I'm going to have you do in San Francisco is um, go to Buena Vista's uh, Cafe for Irish coffees. Um, That's down also on the water on a different side of the city near Fisherman's Wharf, which is a famous tourist spot. Now, I don't uh, don't mean to to cut you off, but, and my apologies, um, but I've never had coffee. Really? Okay. Well, they've got other stuff there too. They've got brunch. They've got, it's, it's okay. like a, it's like an Irish um, pub type place, but it's really, they're, they're most famous for their Irish coffees, but you can get food and other drinks there as well. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. So yeah, you don't have to have the coffee. Um, and then the fourth thing you got to do is of course, go to a San Francisco Giants game because it's one of the most beautiful um, ballparks in the entire country. Yeah. Baseball heaven is what I call it doesn't get better than that and even Dodgers fans have to admit that it's a beautiful spot to watch a game so um you gotta gotta get into that stadium so make sure you come during baseball season okay well I can tell you this I know we both dislike the Dodgers that's one (laughs) thing for sure uh and yeah I would you know or I believe it's called Oracle Park that's right um and yes I definitely I'm always amazed that those people are out there canoeing when the ball is like hit. <laughs> I'm, like, Hold out there. <laughs> I'm like, that's amazing. Uh, I, I love watching amazing. that though. I love watching <laughs> it. You're right. I, I watch it. I would never be in those canoes, but I, no, I love watching absolutely it. Not. <laughs> but yeah, San Francisco Giants game. I'm totally down with that. Hopefully it's the time frame where I can come when my Padres are down there. Cause you know, they'd be great. That's, that's perfect. Great. You got to do it. Make it happen. Absolutely. Okay. I like that. The second top four question has to do with you. Now you can tell me a top four events that you have covered or that you would like to cover, still cover in your career. Um, okay. Well, I've got a, I'm, so, so I'm going to give you all four. I already talked about one. This is not, this is in no particular order, if that's okay. That's fine. All right. 
Uh, the Super Bowl, just a bucket list experience, once in a lifetime experience. If I never get to cover another Super Bowl again, I'll always have that moment and be glad to say that I did it. And it was just a wild week from start to finish. Super Bowl is going on right now. So to all my people who are out there covering the Super Bowl right now, I feel you. I see what you're doing and how hard it is. And uh, <laughs> you play the game. Right. Um, <laughs> um, the other experience that was absolutely incredible um, that I just got to cover um, this past season, I'm going to put these two together because I, I don't know if that's uh, cheating, but um, <laughs> two other finals in sports got to cover some Giants playoffs and um, yeah. of course the Warriors in the finals a couple of years ago. So yeah. postseason of both Major League Baseball and NBA, just incredible experience um, both times around. Hopefully the Warriors will be there again this year and hopefully the Giants will make it even further in years to come because I would love mm -hmm. to keep being able to do that. Mm -hmm. Two things that I really want to cover are both college related. I want to cover a national championship. Mm -hmm. I did that. Um, kind of a couple years ago, I think it was 2019, the national championship, um, Alabama and Clemson was out here, but I didn't get to go in the stadium. I had to stand outside of the stadium doing live shots. Okay. So I want to cover it where I get to go in and be a part of the action. And then the other thing that I'm excited to cover, which I get to do pretty soon coming up here, is um, the Elite Eight and the Sweet 16 is going to be in San Francisco this year. Yeah, And um, I used to cover college hoops when I worked at Pac-12 Network, but I've never gotten to actually go to the tournament that deep into the tournament. Yeah. So I'm um, pretty excited to get to see a little bit of March Madness in person because um, I'm told it's just an unparalleled uh, situation. So I guess I like postseasons is really what you get from the those four answers because I want to I want to see some postseason action in all. It of seems like it, Kate. But you know yeah. what? That's the most exciting time in the sport. I mean, yeah. Super Bowl. That's the grandest of them all in the NFL. And then obviously with the postseason of MLB, most people that's why most people call the baseball season boring because it's long. But once the postseason comes around, nothing there's better. Nothing, there's nothing like it. It really isn't. I had an opportunity to go to the Battery last year when I was in Georgia. Uh, with the World Series, with the Braves and the Astros. Oh, cool. That was absolutely amazing. It was fast, but it was absolutely yeah. amazing. <laughs> a lot of people, for sure. You also talked about March Madness. Uh, that was the one thing. I actually bought Final Four tickets um, when the Final Four was first scheduled to be. It was first scheduled to be in Atlanta, Georgia, the Final Four, before they moved it to Indianapolis. Oh, that's over. right. Yeah. So I was like, ugh. So I had to get my money back. But oh, this course. year... The women's final four is in Minneapolis. So I will so you'll be get to going, go. Yes, I will definitely cool. be going to that for sure. Uh, so I know Stanford is the reigning champion. They might be in I it. Ask you, uh, do you get the chance to cover Stanford if they, if they I actually come was here? just out at their game yesterday. Um, wow. okay. Yeah, I, we definitely focus on the pro sports more, but now that football's over and baseball hasn't started yet, it's pretty much just Warriors, a little bit of Sharks here and there, and then the mm -hmm. colleges. And I love covering that Stanford team. Tara Vanderveer is one of the most incredible people in mm -hmm. not just women's college hoops, but I think in basketball in general, she's a brilliant basketball mind and a wonderful person. And I love watching that team. So much talent, so much depth, mm -hmm. win in all sorts of different ways. And um, I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with again this year. Oh, they'll be back. They'll be the top four. Yeah. They're definitely going to be in the women's final four for sure. I think so too, unless um, something goes really wrong. <laughs> yes, um, I, I definitely think so. I do think South Carolina is going to be there as well. Yeah. Um, be there as well. So I'm hoping that those two uh, go at it again, <laughs> excuse me, in the postseason. It'd be great. If Would you do, see it. if you do get a chance to cover them, please do not hesitate to say hi because I will be in the building for sure. All right. Love and it. Yeah, no <laughs> I doubt. will. Now, Kate, this is my last question to you. It's about advice. What advice would you give someone or someone has gave you? about being in this industry that you hold on dearly to? I've gotten so much incredible advice over the years, but I think the best um, that I've gotten and that I've really tried to play by in my career is um, two, I'm gonna say two things. Okay. Um, one, that you never know who you're gonna be working with and for again. So it's so important to get to know everyone in your business and treat everyone with the same amount of respect. Um, oh, yeah. For example, if you're at an ESPN event and you see Scott Van Pelt, you should be just as nice to him, but you should also make just as much of an effort to talk to the person who's holding the wires for the camera guy and get to yeah. know them because 
maybe in the future, they're going to be the person who runs the network and gets you a job. And also, it's just nice to be nice to people. So um, you might meet some of the most incredible people you know doing things behind the scenes. And I just love the idea of getting to know those people and really building your network of not just other people who are reporters. Um, the other advice that has really stuck with me is that especially the time that we're in for journalism is there's no one way to do it. Everyone gets to forge mm -hmm. their own path. And yeah. there are so many um, ways you can make your voice stand out and ascend to where you want to be in your career. Um, when I was first starting out, there were a lot of um, people who were telling me that I had to go the really traditional route and um, yeah. you know move to somewhere really small which I was uncomfortable with because I was from a big city and I just didn't know how I would fare. And I was a little older when I was getting my career started. If I was younger, I would have been willing to do that. Yeah. Um, and for some people, that's great. But for me, I just, I, I had a lot of fear about that situation. And I got some advice from um, some people that I worked with at the, at the time who said, that's a great way to do it. I know a lot of people who have, and they've really succeeded and worked their way up and it's fantastic. But there are other ways to do it as well, especially in this digital era we live in. Make YouTube videos, start a podcast, build your social media presence, um, start working in production, and then try to get your on-air opportunities. Yeah. So there are lots of different ways to do it, and that's the path that I ended up choosing to follow. And so far, it's worked out for me. I'm not saying that I'm at the pinnacle of, of any uh, you know career, but um, I chose to listen to the advice to forge my own path and do it in a way that I felt comfortable with. And so I think listening to yourself and not sacrificing um, what you feel comfortable with is just incredibly important. You're absolutely right. There's no question. There's not just one way to break into this. Um, I broke, I, I can tell you honestly, I broke into it by going on my first internship, doing a game day operation, finding out that's not what I wanted to do. Um, yep. taking mega buses because I didn't have a car. I would take the mega bus from Atlanta to Knoxville and I would keep going back and forth, pay my own hotel and eventually start uh, this up. And when I kind of started this, I started networking with people uh, from you know big organizations to local, uh, network with a very good friend of mine now and Katie Barnes, who- uh, oh, I love he, her. Yes, uh, she's the ESP, as you know, ESPN features writer. And she hooked me up yeah. with, a, um, with a website called The Pantheon and the 30 newsletter. And she was like, hey, you know, you got to start applying to some of these jobs because you're doing some of these things. Get your stuff out there. And I did. And that's how I ended up here in Marshall, Minnesota, because the sports editor called me and he was like, oh, I like some of your work. And that's how I got here. See, and that's incredible. And that's that's such an that's not a normal story. You know right. what I mean? Right. That you found a way to, to make it work for you. I just I think that's beautiful. And I think that that's inspirational to people who, you know, might be worried that they're going to have to really compromise their own integrity or what they want for themselves in order to do this job. And you don't have to. No, not at all. And I knew Cron, I, I knew about Cron and some of the uh, and stuff like that because they were, they had some postings uh, that I was like, oh man, San Francisco would be pretty nice to go there. But, and I, I tried to connect with some people. And one of the people that I tried to connect with that I'm probably going to get maybe after the season that you, that you know, that's at Cron. It's Kyla Mills. Yes, my colleague. She's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes. So she, her and I are going to talk afterwards um, and, and later into the season um, as we're going to do the same thing as we have done on this platform because nice. I love talking to different people and hearing their story. Me too. And your story is amazing. What you do is amazing work, Kate. Uh, and I'm following you on LinkedIn. Um, Obviously, I got your your Instagram, I believe. I got you on Instagram. And if you have a Twitter, I will follow you there as well. I have your email. Um, and you're just amazing. I mean, it's been an amazing talk. Obviously, I learned more about you. Learned about your musical theater background. We both love musicals, which is great. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was the best surprise. Yes, it I was. Loved, I love talking with you, too. And I'm really excited to watch your career uh, blossom as well. I appreciate that, Kate. I really do. As I end all of my podcasts, I always ask this question. Is there anything else you would like to add before we conclude? Um, I just want to say that we're working in the best industry in the world. Everyone wants to work in this business. And, uh, you know, it takes a special combination of determination, being a good person, and um, hard work to, to make it happen. So anyone who's watching and, and wants to do it, you absolutely should. You won't regret it. 
um, because most of the time I don't feel like I'm working. And I, like I said, I have to pinch myself all the time. So I just think that that's a, an important message for people to know how great it really is. It, it's worth all of the difficult stuff we talked about. It's totally Absolutely. worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. To do what you love is always going to bring some kind of adversity, but at the end of it is what you love. And, exactly. and we are blessed every day to wake up in the morning and say, we are doing a job that we love to do because there's a lot of others out there that are doing jobs that they don't. So it just it no is doubt. what it is for that. But Kate, I appreciate you coming on here. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Please stay in touch. Do not be a stranger. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time. Will do, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. No doubt. Take care. Bye. All right. Be in touch. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank <laughs> you.